what happens is uh, we have in the Northern hemisphere, we have a lot of times we have sudden stratospheric warmings. And what happens is, um, as you know, when you look at the weather map and you see the high pressures and the low pressures and everything in the jet stream uh, going around the globe, we have these big planetary scale waves, we call them Rossby waves. And when those get strong, and they go up into the stratosphere, what happens is, is they get up to the top of the, up toward like 160, 165,000 feet and they break. And then as they break, they weaken that westerly flow. They start to weaken the polar night jet. And then it can either weaken it or even make it turn easterly at that level. So let's say it turns easterly at that level. Well, then we get some more Rossby waves coming in, some strong ones, they go up. Now they hit that easterly level and they break a little lower down in the atmosphere because they can't penetrate up through that easterly flow. They break and then they cause easterly flow. And then it keeps happening lower and lower and lower in the atmosphere to where all of a sudden we have a reversal of flow up there and it turns easterly and it weakens the polar night jet. And it actually, all of the air turns in toward the poles and sinks. And when it sinks, it compresses. So it's not really a warming, it's really a compression of the air. So that's why the strat why you get the sudden stratospheric warming. But then it spreads out and it all that cold air has to go somewhere. <laughs> and so uh, for example, right now we have the when it splits into two with because we have a sudden stratospheric warming going on, the actual two sister lobes are uh, one, the high pressure part is over, over Alaska right now and the low pressure part is over Greenland. So the flow is coming right down the center of the United States, cold air.